and welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. So happy Sunday, everybody. I hope you're all really, really well. I'm doing my Friday sews this week and I'm doing it on Sunday. Yeah, because, well, why the heck not? Um, it's been a busy week, really busy week, and I've got loads to chat to you about. But first things first, I just want to get a little bit of admin done. And that is, back in December when I was doing Vlogmas loads of you guys bought me a coffee on my Kofi account which is always linked down in the description box below and I you know I'm overwhelmed by the generosity of you guys throughout December which was just amazing so thank you to everybody that did that there were a few people that came in really late towards the end of December that obviously I wasn't filming daily vlogs at that point so I haven't been able to thank you for um yeah buying me a coffee so i'm just going to put your names along the bottom of the screen now because there were still quite a few of you that i've not personally been able to say thank you to so i'll put your names across the bottom of the screen thank you so so much for your generosity it's really really appreciated and yeah i was pretty overwhelmed with that so thank you and then also to the lovely christine who i know is a avid watcher of my channel she always leaves me such lovely comments and Christine sent a gift for Bronte and Bronte's been here this weekend, which is why I'm filming so late in the evening tonight. And Bronte opened it this afternoon. It's this beautiful, beautiful little nappy bag that she has made for her. So thank you so much. I'll put a picture of Bronte with it here. She really loves it. And yeah, it's just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So thank you so much, Christine. That's so thoughtful of you. So here we are again, another week over. I have made three things this week that I want to talk to you about, one of which I'm wearing, but I'll talk about that a little bit later in the vlog. First things first, I went up to Newcastle last weekend with the lovely Ruan and also to meet up with Tamlin, where we were working on some projects for our Northern Soul Sisters venture and yeah we did a live which loads of you managed to join in with which was just incredible we enjoyed ourselves so so much it just was amazing and there's also been a couple of other vlogs that we've put out since then so do go and check those out if you aren't already subscribed to our northern soul sisters channel i will leave a link to that down in the description box below and yeah, we went up to work on that, but also to go to Sotoon on the Sunday, which we'd actually booked way back in, I think, August or September last year. So we were really looking forward to going up and, yeah, seeing lots of lovely people who we've met before, like Marilyn and Linda and um, Lucy and Morgan and Alison. It was just so lovely to see everybody again. And also the lovely Catherine, who is Silverton Makery here on YouTube. She came up all the way up from Hampshire, which was a mammoth journey for her with her friend Alex, I think it was. And yeah, it was lovely to finally meet her in real life as well. We had a little trip to first for fabrics and I did get a couple of fabrics, which I will show you shortly. And yeah, we had a really good time. So my project that I wanted to sew at Sotoon this time was another pair of the Heyday Dungarees by Waves and Wild. Those of you that watched me during December during Vlogmas will know that I made a purple pair of Heydays and I absolutely love them so much. And then I had a lovely FaceTime with Andy from So Andy Sews and she was wearing a black cord pair of yantas i think they were by helen's closet and i just loved how they looked on her so i knew i was going to make myself another pair so i bought myself three meters of black needle cord and i think i got this from pound fabrics i think and i decided this was going to be my project for so tune because i think when you go into a sewing day it's probably not wise to take something that's either really complicated or something that you've never sewn before that's also maybe a bit complex as well because you know you want to be sociable don't you and, and talk to people and chat and that kind of thing so I felt that taking something that I'd sewn before and I knew you know pretty much it was pretty straightforward to put together was the wise choice and I'm glad I did so here they are you'll have to excuse them because they have been worn and they're ready to go in the wash to be honest so there's bits of fluff and all sorts all over them but here are my 
heydays my second pair of heydays and basically they have two options for tying you've either got these loops what you put your ties through and just tie them around each other or you can put buttonholes in and buttons or again just put the ties through so I chose the loops, which is what I did with my first pair, and I just really like how that looks. They have a pocket on the bib, which hopefully you can just see there, a centre front seam. The back is more or less the same. It has, oops, it has a straight back at the top with the ties, and then it has a centre back seam. It has two patch pockets, at the back one is here one is there i don't think you can see that very well and the other is there and then the same on the front legs as well there's just one there look and lots of fluff which cord is you know very uh very good at attracting isn't it but i made these longer because i wanted to be able to turn them up and i just really like that look i think it looks you know it's a really nice aesthetic i put one of my so anonymous labels in the back as well and yeah i'm really happy with them i also french themed them entirely i don't know if you can see that but yeah the, all the seams inside are completely french themed which is nice to do on needle cord especially this weight if it was heavy a heavier cord i wouldn't have done that because it would have been too bulky but for this weight of cord it worked fine to be honest and yeah i absolutely love them i do think the pockets are a little bit low the front pockets on the legs and the back pockets are probably just a little bit too low but i think that's probably because i've lengthened the waist and the crotch depth on these for me by about an inch an inch and a half on each and obviously that's dropped the pockets which i didn't take into account so i have gone with the original pocket placement which is now a bit too low so i need to raise that on my next pair but you can't tell in the black cord i did think about taking them off and redoing them but then i thought i'm liable to slip with my seam ripper and i don't want to risk it so i didn't bother i've just left them did have a couple of hiccups with them at so tune and the first one was my own error because I didn't take my spare fabric with me and I did have a little bit left over from these and just left it at home thinking I don't need to take that I was trying to cut down on the amount of stuff that I took with me and I take my Bonina sewing machine which is a smaller sewing machine than my faff which is here I have, a, I have a second machine that I take on these kind of social days and social events because I don't want to take this because it's too big, too heavy, too delicate, as in it's so precious to me. Um, it was so expensive. My dad bought me it and obviously I don't have my dad anymore. So it's really quite a precious machine and I don't want it to get knocked or anything. So I bought myself a second machine, which is a Benina. And um, I don't love it as much as this, but I can see what how good a machine it is. But it's just a bit more finicky. My faff will you know, it's a real workhorse. It never lets me down. I can do anything to it because I'm quite, um, what's the word? I'm not gentle with it, shall we say. <laughs> and it always, you know, it works amazingly. It's just brilliant, which is what I want from a machine. Whereas the Benina is a little bit more delicate, shall we say. And yeah, a little bit more temperamental, a little bit more of a diva. And yeah, I had a bit of an issue with the bib pocket when I was top stitching the top over the raw seam over the edge and it just didn't like it. The bobbin was not working properly. It, it was getting tangled and it ended up chewing a hole in the pocket piece. So because I didn't have any spare fabric with me, I couldn't cut out a new piece. So I had to sort of put that to one side and think, well, I'll, I'll carry on getting as far as I can with these and redo that when I get home. And then I realised when I was sewing the straps on that the straps are supposed to be cut on the fold. So obviously you get twice the length. I hadn't done that. So it meant my straps were really short and obviously I'd made the straps and attached them before I figured this out. I sort of looked at them thinking these look really short and then I looked at what I'd done. So I had to take the straps off but which meant I couldn't go any further with it. So apart from the straps, hemming the legs and the bib pocket, I did manage to get the rest of these sewn up at so too. And then we drove home. And Ruan drove, bless her. I fell asleep on her in the car again, all the way home. Um, yeah, so I was out for the count. I think I was just 
shattered and yeah when we got back we got I got back to Ruan's because I'd left my car at her house and transferred everything over in the dark drove home got home unpacked everything and thought where's my dungarees yeah somebody was holding them ransom but anyway I was I had a um an evening out during the week to see if another friend who lives not far from Rouen and I just messaged him and said can I just call and pick up my dungarees and then I can get them done um so yeah I called in during the week to pick those up and got them back yes they were hidden in she'd put them away you know she'd actually put them in away in a sewing cupboard in a sewing room hoping probably I'd I'd uh I'd uh forget about them but I was more worried about the fact that she might be inspecting all my stitching and just to see how how uh how rubbish it is but she she wasn't she assured me she hadn't done that so anyway um yeah so I got them back I had a Thursday off work and my first project for Thursday was to get these finished and I still made an error with the bib pocket because cord has a nap which means if you brush it one way and then brush it the other way it feels really smooth one way and then rough the other way because the fibers are sort of lay slightly forward if that makes sense so i always like my cord when i make anything out of cord i like it to feel smooth when i brush down my body if that makes sense not that we tend to do that but you know what i mean and i have done that with these so everything goes in that direction but the bib pocket that i recut Thursday morning I cut it out with the nap going the other way and I didn't realize until I'd sewn it on and I could see the difference because you get like shading and like a shadow effect and then I noticed it so obviously that had to come off and I had to redo it so yeah third time lucky I got the bib pocket on right yes and then recut the straps to the correct length on the fold did those got them finished and I've worn them to death since to be honest so it, they've just been what I've wanted to put on as soon as I've got in from work on Friday and I wore them yesterday as well but they are ready to go in the wash now so that was the first thing that I've made this week then I also made a pair of green style Cavallo I think they're called Cavallo leggings which I'll put a picture of here I love green style patterns they are great for athletic wear and I use their patterns a lot and I have made a pair of these before but just in the shorts what I love about them is that I can they've got pockets on the sides which I can fit easily fit my phone in so I can go out with my I can go out with my phone and I've got that in a pocket which means I just feel a bit safer when I'm running and I mean I'm talking like I run loads I did used to run loads and I haven't been a lot lately but I've started again I want to get myself back into you know running regularly and I was going to a new running club that started a few months ago very very local to me it's literally a mile away and I've been meaning to join them since they started up in August and I just haven't obviously with lots of things that have been going off it's just not been at the forefront of my mind and new year new start and all that I thought you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna go because it's on a Thursday evening and I can always go because even if I'm working I finish at four on a Thursday so I have no excuse so I thought you know what I'm gonna make myself a new pair of running leggings to go to the running club with let me just go grab them and i'll show you so here are the cavallo leggings i just did them in plain black and i wanted the full length legging this is just a plain back lycra that i got from walton's where i get most of my black lycra from and they have these sort of slanted deep side pockets as you can see there which i've got on both sides and then at the back, I've just got this contrast, which is a athletic lycra that I got from Bottle and Slate, which is a custom fabric group on Facebook. They also have a website as well. They do sort of pre-orders in rounds. And I got this some time ago. And just look at my seam matching there. How cool is that? I was so, so impressed, honestly. So yeah, I made these. These have a, they have, the seams are not sort of down the legs. Well, that sounds ridiculous because of course the seams down the legs, but they don't have a inside leg seam because they're actually designed to be like a riding pant that you can make jobbers from. 
but you know I made them into running pants and I just like that little flash of colour I think that's quite nice so yeah I wore those to running club on Thursday evening and they performed really well I always put a strip of clear elastic around the seam line of the waistband because that helps leggings stay up when you're running so yeah that that always works for me so they were they were great they were great to run in i've got a decent amount of compression which is what i like when i'm running and really love them so yeah we'll definitely definitely be making more of those so moving on to what i am wearing now i mentioned in my last vlog which was the beyond the pink door subscription box for December this was the fabric that came in that box and if you watch that vlog I'll put a link to it up here somewhere you will see that I wasn't initially completely taken with this fabric now as a fabric it's beautiful quality absolutely beautiful quality so soft it's gorgeous but the print was not a print that I would not ordinarily be drawn to. It's not my usual style. So I think I mentioned in that vlog that I wanted to get this pre-washed and made up into something pretty sharp. And the reason for that is because I knew that if I didn't do that, it would end up going into the stash, sitting there for two or three years. And then in two or three years time, I would, you know, um, dig it out of the stash and think, I'm never going to make anything with this. I'll just destash it or sell it or whatever. And I didn't want to do that because obviously it's a subscription box fabric. And I just wanted to, I just thought, you know what? I need to make this up because I think I wanted to sort of prove to myself that sometimes you can see fabric in its flat form and you just not be taken with it. And then when you make it up into something and it becomes a 3D shape, you can feel completely different about it. So loads of you gave me some amazing ideas on that vlog, actually. Quite a few of you mentioned the Closet Core Knicks dress because obviously, I suppose, I suppose because I'd recently made it. However, unfortunately, there was only two and a half metres and the Knicks dress needs a lot more than that. So that wasn't going to be an option. I did think about the Knicks blouse, but unfortunately, at the minute, that particular style... I would not feel comfortable in um, because I need something to, if I'm not highlighting my waist, I don't want to see my full legs, if that makes sense. And I would wear that kind of blouse with skinny jeans. And I just would, if I'm wearing skinny jeans, I need something to accentuate my waist. Does that make sense? So yeah, I, at the minute, I mean, I love the NYX blouse and I would like to make it at some point, but it's knowing what to make knowing what to wear that particular blouse with that's going to make me feel comfortable in how I look if that makes sense so it was an option absolutely and a really good option but not for me this time and yeah a few people were talking about it's got a real boho vibe to it in how much you thought the colour suited my skin tone etc so yeah I, I I knew I wanted to go something boho-ish but I had to really think about what I wanted to make with it and I knew I wanted to make something this weekend. So I had a little look online yesterday and I got taken to Barra Studio, which I was taken there from the fold line because they released a blog yesterday, blog post about new patterns. And I had a look at Barra Studio. They're a German fabric company. No, they're a German pattern designer. And one of the patterns that they had on there is this, which is the Lova dress. And Basically, this dress is a bit of a boho vibe. It's got v-neck, as you can see. There are no fastenings on this dress, as in you just literally slip it over your head. It has a facing around the back neckline and the front. And then it has a flounce on the sleeve, which comes down to sort of the about just under your bust. And then the flounce goes all the way over the shoulder around the back, as you can probably see there on both sides hopefully you can see that to about there now it's interesting because it's not princess seamed as such but it has a, a, a seam all the way down the front here because you've got your front pattern piece which is cut on the fold you have the back pattern piece which is cut on the fold as well and then you have a side panel which is seamed from here to here and is curved um under the arm 
and then the sleeves are full length with a cuff and um continuous lap and then I just put on these gorgeous buttons that Sean sent me, who is Kittenish Behaviour. She sent me these in my advent calendar. So I thought I would use two of those because I think they go so well with this fabric and this design. But yeah, I really, really like it. Oh, and then it's got a ruffle along the bottom. Um, so it's just a straight dress with, yeah, a bit of a ruffle along the bottom. And... <laughs> I really like it. I will put some other images that I've taken of me wearing this up here for you so you can see. But this was a pretty straightforward sew. The only thing I changed about the pattern, well, first things first, I made no adjustments to this, which is amazing. Now, I've always found that German, I mean, German women tend to be tall like I am anyway. And I think I'm just assuming here, this is a massive assumption, but I am assuming that German pattern designers are drafting for primarily their own sort of local audience. And I couldn't find anywhere on this pattern, A, what the finished garment measurements were, and B, what height Barra Studio drafts for either. But I used the block pattern that I've got. I have got a sleeve sleeve and bodice block pattern and the sleeve particularly I looked at to see how how it measured up with my sleeve block and they were the same length so I knew at that point I thought I got a feeling this dress is going to be the right length for me without having to make any adjustments and I was completely right so I've made no adjustments to the sleeve length um no adjustments to the dress length I have just literally cut it out as is Right, so the dress comes in size extra small up to size extra large, which equates to a bust of, these are in centimetres, 74 to 82 centimetres, and the extra large is 108 to 117. And then the hip is an 85 centimetre up to 120 centimetres. So it's like a lot of Europe, European patterns, I found the size range isn't very inclusive and I totally accept that but I was looking for a pattern that would work for me with this fabric and so I, you know when I saw that pattern I really loved it and thought I think it's going to work really well with this fabric but yes bearing in mind that it's not very inclusive I cut out the size large to extra large so I've gone for more or less the biggest size um, the extra large because I wanted the room around my hips and the large is probably just a little bit too big around my shoulders I could it does tend to sort of slip down a bit over my shoulder if that makes sense but um, I could probably have done with a medium I think with how much ease I've got around it and if I think if I'd have known what the ease was then I might have chosen a slightly different size, but I'm happy with it all the same. I think it's a really lovely pattern. The instructions are in English and German, which was amazing. And there is a video tutorial as well, but I didn't need to use it, to be honest. The only other thing that I did change was with the flounce. I see this a lot with flounces where they get you to cut out um, mirrored images and just one pair and then get you to do a really tiny hem along it or a rolled hem or whatever but I always think it is such a faff and you never get a really perfect result unless your skills are amazing my skills are just not that good and I always think if you can see the underside of it you're better off just doing a double flounce so that that's exactly what I did so I cut out four flounces and then sewed these wrong sides together so two of the flounces wrong side together, turn them the right way out, press them, basted the raw edges together and then put the flounce on. And that means then, it, I mean, first things first, it's a lot easier doing it that way than trying to faff about with creating a narrow hem. But also it just gives you a much nice, nice, neat, neater finish so that you can, when you see the underside of it, it's the same as the facing fabric. So... So yeah, I am super happy with it. I really like it. And I'm really pleased that I've got this fabric now made up because I think I'll wear this a fair bit. I have worn it with a belt as well. I've tried it on with a belt and I think, you know, I, I do like it with a belt. I think that probably suits me a little bit better. But I think if I'm wearing this with like a long cardigan and boots, then without a belt is going to be absolutely fine as well. But yeah, I'm super 
super happy with it. I think it's gorgeous. Fabric then. Yes, when we were at So Tune last week, we did have a little trip to First for Fabrics. Julie sometimes opens for us for So Tune on a Sunday, which is really lovely of her because they're not generally open to the public on a Sunday. And I did have a, have a look because I knew that they'd got some new fabrics coming in. So let me grab them and I'll show you what I bought. So I only bought three fabrics on this occasion. The first one, just a plain black stoff jersey. It's just a cotton jersey. So it's I've cut out a Jackson T in that, which is somewhere, somewhere in the midst of this sewing room. So I'm not going to show you that because it's just a plain black jersey. But the others I bought is this one. Now they've got some gorgeous new French terries in that are like a sort of space dye print and I really love this colorway. I think they have it in a blue, a green I think and a black as well but I loved this colorway. It is so up my street. So I got myself I think a meter and a half of that and they also have matching ribbon which is amazing. I mean look at that. Those colors are just Mm, yummy. So I got half a metre of the matching ribbing as well. And my plan with this is to make a Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweater. I've had that pattern for so long now and I still haven't made it up and I really need to. So yeah, that's going to be on my make list soon. I think they're just going to look so nice. It's so lovely. I would have loved the black, um, the black colourway as well. And I might actually go back and get some but we shall see. We shall see. I'm trying to be good and not buy loads of fabric at the moment because I've got far too much. I didn't really say that, did I? You didn't hear me say that. Anyway, second fabric I bought is this one, which again is a jersey. I think is this, I think it's a cotton jersey and they had this in a few colourways, but I bought this colourway and I think I bought three metres of this because I'm just going to make myself a pair of shorty PJs and the pattern that I think I'm going to use is the Avid Seamstress pyjama pattern. It, I'll put a picture of it here. It is a free pattern. I've made the bottoms from that pattern before to go with a Tammy Handmade Etta camisole that I wore as PJs, which I love them. They're, they're great and I love the bottoms. It's designed for woven fabrics, but I think for PJs it's fine because obviously you're going to put elastic in the waist and I might need to alter just how I finish the neckline with just a neckband or something but I'm going to use that pattern I think and make myself some PJs out of this because I just love it and I think a pair of shorty PJs in this will just, just be gorgeous. So yes that's the other fabric that I bought and I think yeah, I think that's about it, really. I am going tomorrow night. I'm going to see the lovely Sam, who is Frugalissima. I haven't met her before. We have chatted a fair bit through Instagram, but I've never actually met her. And I'm going to see her tomorrow night because she has set up her own business now, Stitch Make Create, where she's running socials and sewing um, courses, etc. And she's doing a bit of a sewing social tomorrow night. Well, tomorrow and next Monday, along with Ali, who is Thimbers on Instagram. She was one of the Sewing Bee contestants a couple of years ago. And yeah, I have met Ali. I met her at the Knitting and Stitching show back in November, actually. We were chatting for a little bit because we're both NHS workers as well. So Ali is doing the social sewing classes get together with um, Sam tomorrow and next Monday and I'm going tomorrow evening with Ruan and so I've just been thinking about what I'm going to make and I want it to be something fairly straightforward and simple. I have been tracing out my jacket pattern which if you head over to the Northern Soul Sisters channel we've put a vlog up about our January jackets plans today actually and I have been spending some time this afternoon tracing off my pattern and adjusting that in readiness for cutting my fabric out for that but I don't want to start on that tomorrow because I need to do that when I've got my own headspace and can just concentrate on it without obviously chatting to people and things so I've been looking for a pattern something something different something new that I've not sewn before that will be fairly straightforward for me to sew at the social tomorrow evening. And the one I've chosen is this. 
So it's this one, which is the Athena Top by Tasuti Patterns. Again, this is a free pattern. I will link to it down below. And it's a drop shoulder, oversized, boxy fit tee, but it's designed for woven fabrics. So it's a lot like the, they do a jersey version. I can't remember the name of it. Is it the Monroe? which I think is a turtleneck, but it's a similar kind of vibe, if that makes sense. But this is for woven fabrics. And I thought it would be nice to make this. So I have printed this off and I just need to choose some fabric. And I think that's what I'm going to sew tomorrow at the social, if I can find some fabric that I want to make that out of. We shall see. We shall see. I've got plenty to choose from, haven't I? Right. I am going to love you all and leave you for now. And hunt down some fabric that I can use to get that pattern cut out and get my things ready for tomorrow. So I hope you've enjoyed catching up with me this week. I hope you have a great week and I will hopefully see you all again next week. Take care. Bye.